Good evening, and welcome to Having a Drink with Mink. I'm your host, Jason Mink, and I was just reading E Presents number 46. That is right, it's the big Halloween issue, 64 pages of independent comics goodness. If you didn't know, Eat Presents is the official comic of the old guys who like old comics. It's uh, the best damn black and white anthology on the market today. That is right. This is the big Halloween issue, and uh, it contains so many creators that, well, we don't have time to mention them all. Larry, can we do a crawl across the screen? There. That's a lot of creators when it comes right down to it. And uh, cheers to all of you. Absolutely. If you're not a subscriber to Yeet Presents, what are you waiting for? Like I said, it is the official uh, publication of the old guys who like old comics. And uh, if you're a member of the group, if you love the videos, well, you could certainly do worse. It's only five bucks a month shipped. That's right. You can't even get an Egg McMuffin for that. So, uh, please, I hope you join us. Uh, next month, it's our big uh, Storm Owl issue. That's right. Storm Owl 8 will be appearing as well. So, get in while the getting is good. Uh, speaking of the getting being good, as you can see, we have a fantastic assortment of comics and other items here. We're going to get right to that right off the bat. We have this fantastic parcel that I received about a week ago from John Tipton. That's right. And this comes all the way from the dusky plains of Oklahoma. So I can't wait to crack this open and see what's inside. Ah, but first, cheers to you, John, and everyone who's joined us on this particular episode of Having a Drink with Mink. I hope that you've had a swell week and uh, you're about to have an even better weekend. Let's make it happen, people. All right. We already have uh, Stabby Joe. He's on hand right off the bat. He was ready to go. He was just as excited to see what was in this particular package as I am. Although uh, not half as tongue-tied, for sure. All right. What do they say? Always cut towards yourself with the sharp knife, right? No, they don't say that. That'd be a damn foolish thing to do. And uh, that's one thing we don't advocate on this show, is damn fools. Okay, what's inside? This is a well-packaged parcel that is for certain what do we have here oh man check it out it is the latest issue of toy ventures i love this magazine i've been following this magazine since issue one now i pick these up at my local comic book shop that's ides entertainment in downtown pittsburgh because uh well i like to support them and i like to support the magazine I don't have this particular issue, so thank you so much, John. I am very excited to pick this up. And uh, what's really remarkable is uh, I just also landed uh, this particular Dr. Zayas figure. So we'll be talking about uh, him in a future three man's five dollars. So don't you ever miss that. Oh, man, that is great. I can't wait to crack this bad boy open. And uh, then it would appear there are a few comics here as well. What could be here? Ah, right off the bat, it's Dell's Superheroes, the end of the Fab Four. And uh, it's funny because I have a copy of this book. I had picked it uh, out of the uh, dollar bin back in the day, excitedly uh, got it home, cracked it open, and discovered it was in Spanish. And... Uh, I don't speak Spanish, so uh, that was a bit of a problem as far as it goes. Of course, I retained the comic. It's still in the archive, but uh, it'll be nice to be able to read it in my native tongue. Assuming this is in Martian. And uh, we got those. Thank you, Joe. Always does a fine job here with us. Actually... He does a better job than I do. Oh, hey, it's the uh, second issue of the Fab Four. And, uh, wow, George is really stepping up his game there, isn't he? And then, all right, I guess this is number three. So, holy cow, we can get a whole comics for breakfast out of these. 
Absolutely. And then we have the Marvel Comics adaptation of, you know it, I love it. It is Star Trek, the motion picture. There's one, and then there's two, right on the other side. Bagging them just the way I do, in big old Silver Age bags. So you have a lot of room. Absolutely. And then oh, we have a beautiful copy. Oh, wow. And that was Comics Phoenix, the Protector, number four. And uh, this is the last issue of that particular title. Indeed, this is one of the last comics that Atlas ever published. Thank you so much, John. This uh, is fantastic. What a wonderful little bundle of comics. I can't wait to check these on out. The end of the Fab Four. And yet, there's two more issues. Who says that decompression was invented in the 21st century, huh? All right, uh, next up, you may have noticed the young lady herself. It is the Domino Dare doll that we've all come to love. It is, in fact, Batgirl. This is the Mego Batgirl, and it is a beautiful uh, example of a vintage figure. I picked this up at my local comic book shop that is, of course, say it along with me now. Ides Entertainment in downtown Pittsburgh. And uh, when I picked her up, she was sans her paper bat, which most of these vintage figures are, because after all, it's just a sticker and it came right off. We were kids. Even as an adult, I have a hard time keeping stuff like that together. And uh, she was also uh, missing her gloves and her cape. But Mink, you say, she has a cape, clearly. Well, that's a result of uh, Sir Basil Snippington and a judicious use of some leftover craft felt. Now, uh, this, of course, isn't the final uh, remedy for this particular problem, but uh, it'll do in the short term. It'll look good on display when I put her with the rest of the Migos because uh, there's no reason for her to be hanging out without a cape. Gosh knows. Okay. Now here it is, the big event. It's the big show. It's the one that you've all tuned in for. It's the one that I've tuned in for, gosh knows. And what could it be? Why, it's old comics, of course. Now, these comics, I picked these up at Ides Entertainment. I went down there today. I told myself, Mink... Don't go to the comic book shop this weekend. You need to save money. After all, there's a big comic book show next weekend, and you're going to want to have a little scrunt to uh, spread around there. Well, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, if uh, 2021 has taught me anything, it's live life to the fullest. Uh, carpe old paper and all that. So that's exactly what I did, and I picked up... Uh, well, when I walked down there, I walked around, I found a few things, found Batgirl, I picked up some uh, bags, because that's what I went down there for, gosh darn it, and uh, and then uh, I went upstairs, and uh, shop owner Kenny was there, he was in the process of buying a collection, and, uh, you know, knowing me... I got the Reed Richards peepers, you know, they're going up and over the counter looking at what this guy has. And I saw this right on the top of a pile. And uh, after Kenny had made a deal, I said, hey, you know, I'm kind of interested in some of those books over there. And so uh, I picked up Amazing Spider-Man Annual number four and number five. I needed both of these. Super happy to have them uh, for the... Uh, ridiculous price of five dollars a piece but the deal folks okay now uh, as you can see there's this box is stuffed absolutely stuffed with old paper what could it be well i'll be honest with you i don't know because uh, from that aforementioned collection, there was a pile that was kind of segregated to one side, and uh, I could see on the top uh, this particular book, and that's uh, Justice League of America number eight. And I was like, uh, hey, Kenny, kind of like to see that pile. And uh, he picked it up, flipped through it, I guess, to make sure there wasn't a copy of Hulk 181 in there or something, and uh, then handed me the whole pile and said, here, it's your problem now. 
And uh, I was thrilled, absolutely. So here we have this uh, remarkable trove. Uh, truly beater readers, absolutely. These things, some of them look like they've been at the bottom of a swamp. But uh, I can't wait to check these out. I can't wait to show them to you in part two, which will be in just a moment. Ah, but first, a word from our sponsors. Our sponsor is you. Make sure you visit the Old Guys Who Like Old Comics swag shop to get all your official Old Guys Who Like Old Comics swag, t-shirts, masks, and so much more. Don't you ever miss it. Okay, so what's in the box? That was the question of the day, and uh, I'm happy to tell you, right off the bat, you know, uh, when it comes right down to it, there's that guy. You know, you'll see him on the bus. Everyone else will be, uh, their heads will be buried in their phone, staring out the window, looking for traces of their lost dreams. And then there'll be that one guy who's having a great time. That guy was me today, reading Superman's Girlfriend, Lois Lane. Uh, this is number 59. I had seen this cover a number of times, but I had no idea how terrific the book actually was. I was, uh, well, I was practically rolling in the aisles, let me tell you. This one's a classic. Certainly looking forward to talking about it on a future Comics for Breakfast. We have Walt Disney's Comics and Stories. This is a gold key featuring Donald and the Boys, Mickey, and the substitute Cinderella. I think I used to go out with her. And, uh... Next up, here's the book that was on top of that pile. It's Justice League of America number 8. And uh, how cool is it to uh, find a book of this pedigree? Absolutely. Granted, it's all beaten up, but it's still really nice. It's number 8. And uh, what a cover. Their are expressions. They're hilarious. <laughs> Wonder Woman looks like she's been caught... Uh, <laughs> blow drying her panties on one of those hand dryers in the women's room and uh john well he looks mad at me for making that joke <laughs> absolutely they're all pretty put out and uh, who can blame them the fellow criminals are bidding uh for the uh justice league they're for sale don't you know 12 cents every month. Don't you ever miss it. And then, of course, you just know there's going to be some Archie in there. It's part of, uh, you know, any free comic pile's DNA. And uh, this is Archie number 209. And fantastically enough, I don't have a copy of this. And it uh, looks like uh, some kid got wise. They needed some extra money. And so they sent away for cards. That's right. You can still get your cards if you uh, follow the link below. Make yourself a little bit of extra money for the holiday season. Here's a Katie Keene, and she goes to Squaw Valley. And uh, how nifty is this? Ordinarily, I don't go in for the Katie Keens when I buy Archie's. Well, I have a tendency to buy Archie and the gang. Uh, Katie was sort of a little before my time, but this is nifty. Sort of the kind of gal that I go for. Sassy, brunette, big-eyed, uh, bangs. And, uh, well, she's out on the ski slope looking for love. Aren't we all? And then here's... Uh, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Little sad sack. And trust me, I am just as speechless as you are as far as this one goes, folks. And then we have uh, Superman's Toughest Day. And uh, wow, how nifty is that? Wow, that is a fantastic splash page. Man, that is so cool. You know, um... I've often talked about, as a kid growing up, uh, having comic books without covers, and uh, the splash pages were actually fairly serviceable for that purpose, especially when they're as uh, clever and inventive as this one. And then we have U.S. Air Force. This is pretty nifty. Looks like it's actually been through a battle. For sure, we're missing the cover, and apparently someone decided to keep it safe in their ring binder. Absolutely. Or they had it hanging on their wall. That'd be convenient, huh? Wonder why I never thought of that. And then, oh, I guess this is the back cover to that. <laughs> I'll just put that.
that there. Press really hard. Hope that it sticks. And uh, then we have uh, some Richie Rich or some Little Lotta. Yeah, it must be Little Lotta. She's in the front. We're missing the first two wraps, but, uh, you know, I'm sure there's some entertaining content to be had in there, nonetheless. And then uh, here's another book that is missing some bits for sure, but uh, I'm told to ask my dealer about the Winchester Firearms time payment plan. So, uh, hey, Joe, get back to me on that one for sure, but uh, that's lovely artwork. You know what I mean? It has that uh, 50s uh, textbook vibe. And then we have Detective Comics number 348. The Birdman of Bedlam. All right, then we have uh, some Dennis the Menace. Absolutely. And this is a big old, at least 64 pages, oh, Menace. For sure. Oh, here's one of his ransom notes. <laughs> and then, uh, we have The Gun That Won the West. And this is another one of those Winchester books. And, uh, this is nifty because it has a rubber stamp from Firearms Unlimited, 119 Shady Avenue, Pittsburgh, 6. We should check them out, see if they're still in business. Hi, I uh, read your comic. I'm interested in purchasing a gun. And then what do we have here? It's the Outlaws of the West. And dig this guy with his mask. Absolutely. If you're not going to... Oh, man. You know, that's got to be pretty impractical, folks. Let me tell you, you're out in the desert. You're not wearing a hat. Oh, wait, that is his hat. I see. I thought he had a giant disco collar and a bondage mask. <laughs> I was going to say, that is no good for your uh, Out West adventures. Or maybe it's ideal for your Out West adventures. And, uh, oh, here's, a co here's the cover of that uh, copy of the Guns of Winchester from earlier. I'll put that uh, there and get back to that later. Then it's uh, Bill Boyd, Undercover Agent. And, oh, uh, wow, how slick is this? Marvel Superheroes number 16, featuring the Phantom Eagle. That is awesome. Now, uh, when this book came out, most of the stories that were in here were reprints, but I believe the Phantom Eagle was a new story. Uh, Marvel was trying to test the waters as far as it goes and see if that character would... Uh, fly, if you will. And, uh, well, judging from the Phantom Eagle movies, uh, the television show, and the underoos, well, you know, it was a rousing success, clearly. And then here's a Superboy. The Adventures of Superman when he was a boy. If you couldn't figure that out, they're going to tell you right there. And uh, this is from 1956. And then what's next? Oh, all right. Wow. Here's a really old Archie. Check that out. Oh, yeah, baby. And we even get a text story at the end. Pie in her eye. Wow. Can't wait to see what that's all about. Here's the saga of the Lucky Seven. This is Fight the Enemy, number two, from Tower Comics. And I'm actually in the process of building those 60s Tower uh, books. So this will be a nice opportunity to check it out and see if uh, this is a book that I want in, uh, in a nice upgraded condition. Or, you know, if I can just hang with this. I got a trunk right there in the corner. Remind me to show you the trunk someday. It is filled with... Stuff like this. Next up, uh, here's a copy of Superman Annual. And, uh, yeah, we're missing the first page. But that's all right. You know, I'm a fairly astute reader. I'm sure I'll pick things up fairly quickly. But uh, this looks like maybe it's from the uh, early 60s. I accept your challenge. And we have Mary Poppins! <laughs> like I said, I had no idea what was in this box. It's Walt Disney's Mary Poppins. And it seems to uh, just be adapting the film. 
There she is, floating away. Bye, Mary Poppins. And then we got just some pieces. Oh, wow. I don't know what that's a piece of, but it looks awesome. I think this is some American Comics Group horror right here, if I'm not mistaken. But that's just a guess. And we have uh, Steve Zodiac and the Fireball 5? XL5! And that's just the cover. But uh, you know what? The comic might not be there, but I can learn about fish. You know, because uh, we can all do to learn a little bit more about our aquatic friends. That's right. When was the last time you thought about your friends in the sea? Then we have Batman number 179. And this is the Riddler. And um, from what I understand, I could be wrong, but this is the first appearance of the Riddler in the Silver Age. I thought that I heard some scuttlebutt about that in the comic book shop. Not in the best condition, of course, but pretty nifty to read nonetheless. I guess that belongs to that. <laughs> then we have, oh, it's some Ghost Rider. Come on, y'all. And what's going on here? Oh, he's fighting <laughs> the COVID cowboy, apparently. Oh, shit, and he's shot Slim Whitman. It truly will be a lonesome cattle call. Oh, yeah, it's the world's most mysterious Western hero. We have uh, some uh, Congo King, and uh, he's hunting the great Tusk Tog. That's right. I guess you had to do something before Tinder was invented, right? And then here, it's the impossible maritime menaces of the sea devils. And look at that spooky old booger. Are you blind, Judy? The creature's about to destroy us. Come on, Judy. Get it in gear. Jeez. Take your sea devil card away. And then we have the fighting forces. That is right. Gunner and Sarge. And uh, here's Gunner, helpfully labeled, so we know, you know. Obviously, Sarge is the one who's doing all the heavy lifting here. And uh, it's a valuable back cover. We'll want that for later. Fight the enemy. Here's another Tower War comic. And I may actually have this one in uh, better condition, amazingly enough. But uh, still, come on, y'all. And then uh, what is next? The Courageous Corporal. Some more war stuff. Then we have, oh, what's the Buster Brown comic book? And I'm not sure if the comic itself is in here, but uh, if the cover is any indication, well, it's certainly something worth looking for. I'll be on the hunt for it, absolutely. Then we got some more upside down books. Larry, why didn't you go through and sort these? Wow. Oh, yeah, baby. Man, if only you could smell what I smell. It's decades of... Well, we like to call it magic. And, uh... What the hell, are these all upside down? Damn it. All right, we'll just crack through the last ones real quick. We have Champion in Roundup Trouble. Oh, that's nice. I like all the little figure work on that one. Some cowboy comics. Can't go wrong, can't go wrong. And uh, here's a piece of the War of the Worlds. Looks like the most exciting piece. <laughs> There's that. Some dregs of uh, a Western comic. There's our Army at War. Featuring the Brass Sergeant. Oh yeah, baby. And this is where the true magic lies. Here's Crime Does Not Pay. That is right. This is a wonderful pre-code uh, book from uh, Liv Gleason. Like we were talking about earlier. And uh, ordinarily, 
oh, I'll pay a couple bucks for these. To be able to get one free and uh, to be able to get one that I can scan without bending the cover up, well, that's just sensational. And then here's some more Buster Brown comics. Wow. It's the Monkey King. That's right. Get to know him. And then we have a dog named Flanders. Idly ho, neighborino. You know, submarine attack! It's the last man out. And more. That is right. As if that wasn't enough. Wagon train. Circle the wagons, Pa. Robert Horton and Ward Bond are ready to ride. And then we have... Oh, my little Margie, Margie, it's you. Here we have. Oh, check that out. That's awesome. I have no idea what the hell's going on, but how cool is that? And then we have uh, some bits and pieces. No idea. Oh, it looks like an angry gorilla. There. Oh, he don't walk too happy there. That gorilla, someone took his banana away. And then, uh, heck, you know, let's just wrap things up with Rat Patrol. That is right. Seek, find, and destroy the mission into mayhem. And apparently, once again, uh, <laughs> we have a, someone using the coupons. In this case, they wanted spaceman strength and endurance. So I'm guessing if we were to track this person down today, well, they'd be built like a brick shit house. Hey, guy, I have your Rat Patrol comic. All right. But that's not all, folks. That's right. I kept telling myself not to forget this. I'm going to show you now. It is the Mars Attacks 2014 calendar. 2014 mink. Come on, dude. 2014 was how many years ago? Well, it just so happens that it was uh, seven years ago, which means that I can use this calendar again for two and a half months. <laughs> But that's all right, because for five bucks, you're getting huge reproductions of these phenomenal pieces of card art, this uh, painted artwork from masters like uh, Wally Wood. For a Finsky... I couldn't go wrong. Absolutely. It was all at my local comic book shop. How do you get such great deals? Well, I recommend that you go to your local comic book shop. Absolutely. If you don't have one in your area, hit a flea market, hit a garage sale, or the local uh, ads in the paper, even Facebook Marketplace. There are deals to be had, my friend, and I would like to see what you find. Thank you for sharing in my it appears that my drink is just about gone, so I'm going to wrap it up. This has been uh, an extra long episode, I'm sure. Thank you for bearing with us if you have up until this point. Uh, I hope to see you this Sunday for Comics for Breakfast. Until then, cheers, my friends. <laughs>